I don't know if you guys know uh, how, how difficult it is to play the piano. I've been trying to play the piano for years now, and that, 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 is, a, that is a difficult task right there. So I just praise the Lord for your talent, and at such a young age, I don't know how long you've been playing, but that, that was fantastic, and, and I thank you for that, brother. That was a blessing to my soul. I thank you all for being here this morning. Uh, like, like Brother Nario said, my name is Daniel. I've been in the Marine Corps for 10 years. And uh, I'm just traveling wherever the Lord takes me, really, at the end of the day. And if he's calling me to preach or witness or soul in or evangelize, wherever in the world. Um, my parents, uh, they've been Christians for a very long time, went to uh, Tennessee Temple. Uh, I know some familiar faces in here, some new faces. It's great to see y'all. I'm thankful that this place is packed every time I come here uh, with all the faithful members. Really, uh, you guys are part of the church of God at the end of the day. You guys are part of the body of Christ. That is what the church is. is it's a body of believers. And so there's so many other places that you guys could be. Um, I know there's a lost and dying world out there that could care less about the things of God. Um, but thanks be to God that you guys are here and you guys are always here faithful, wanting to hear from God. And so I really hope that, uh, that the Lord will, will bring forth what he has to say today. And uh, the text that we're going to uh, look at today is from Psalms 37, and I've titled this message, uh, The Great Deliverer, and this was, uh, I was reading in the Psalms, I try to read in the Psalms and the Proverbs, the Acts, and um, every single day, uh, one chapter from Acts, Proverbs, and Psalms every single day, and to try to get something from God, and then something from the Gospels every day as well. And that way we never forget about who our Savior is. And that's Jesus Christ at the end of the day. But there's so much wisdom and, and love and knowledge in the Psalms, in the Proverbs. And then Acts obviously being you know, where, the, where the church started. Where it was really first sent out as, as missions and whatnot. And so I was going through a lot of different trials and tribulations and persecutions and uh, situations at work recently. Uh, over the past year or two really. And uh, even some things that had just happened uh, just today. Uh, I'll let you in on something. I've been up since uh, 7 this morning at work dealing with a Marine that got a DUI last night. And so when I, I mean, I've had this message on my heart ever since Brother Nario uh, had scheduled me to come here. Uh, because I knew what I, what I was going through already beforehand. And this was the text that helped me to get through that. And I believe that God has something in here for us all to glean from. And we'll get into the reading in just a second. But this Marine is, he's not the problem. People are not the problem. Sin and Satan and deception is the problem. And so this Marine is very remorseful of his actions. And granted, it, it brought a tough job on me. You know, I have to go to work. Okay, whatever, you know, I'll deal with the situation. But at the end of the day, there's always a root cause and a root issue to every uh, situation in life, every problem. The people are not the problem. Yes. Granted, it, it is our heart. The heart of the issue is the heart. And so we have to get our hearts right with God first. Yeah. And then uh, when we work on the inner man, it will change the outer man and our actions will change from there. And so I really hope to be a help to this Marine um, uh, at, at this difficult point in time. But let, let's read in Psalms 37. And it says... Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And commit thy ways unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass." And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For, evil do, for evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while... And the wicked shall not be, yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight thyselves, themselves in the abundance of peace. And the wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. And the Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. 
And the wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. And the Lord knoweth the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke shall they consume away. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And that is that mighty right hand. I have been young, and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful, and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. And the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. In the mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. And the Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land when the wicked are cut off, and thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading themselves like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace." But the transgressors shall be destroyed together, and the end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them, and he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for thy word today, Lord. I pray that you would speak to every individual and every heart here, Lord, and give them the bread of life, Lord, and that eternal, everlasting, living water, Lord, that we so very much need, Lord, so that we never thirst again, Lord. Thank you for thy word, Lord. Empty me of self, Lord, and allow these people's hearts to be open and the minds to be open to what you would have to say to them, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I love this text so much, and uh, this has helped me out tremendously. There are so many passages in here um, that goes through things that can help us on our daily lives, this journey through life. Look at, uh, we're going to go verse by verse here, and we're just going to look and see what God has to say to us. And, and if the Lord is speaking to you, I would ask that you respond to him by prayer, by whatever he's telling you to do at the end of the day. Just respond to the Lord. Fret not thyself because of evil do for evildoers. That in the beginning here, it's talking about the number one thing. Fear not. What is the one thing the Bible tells us to fear? It tells us to fear the Lord. Not in a, not in a, not in a sense that we're afraid of God, but that we revere Him so much that we will bow down to Him and we will give up our very lives to serve Him because He first died for us and He loved us so much that He even thought to create us and give us the very life that we have so that we would be loved by Him and so that we would be pleasing in His sight and so that we would also share this life with God. That's what God has created us for. And so He tells us in the very beginning, he says, because of evildoers, so there will be evildoers in life, but we are not to fear that. What is an evildoer? Sin can even be the evildoer. This doesn't have to just be talking about another individual. It can be, it can be talking about a battle you're facing in your mind, because we know that we wrestle not against people, but against flesh and blood. Uh, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. That's what the New Testament calls it, right? So we are not, we are not at war with people. And, and that's why God tells us here, do not fear the evildoer. Because it's not, it's not the people that are the problem. When somebody comes at me in my life, I look at it and I, and I think, well, they're either number one, they're lost and they don't know Christ. 
or they are not uh, responding in the power of the Holy Spirit if they are a Christian. They are not walking with God. They're not in fellowship. They're not in right fellowship with God. If a Christian does me wrong, I have to look past that and I cannot speak to that. I have to just say, all right, let me, let me let this slide off my back. Let me not let this aggravate me because before we were saved, if you're saved here, before we were saved, we responded in the flesh to everything. Somebody does us wrong, we got to get back at them. No. New Testament says, love your enemies and bless those that persecute you. So we are not to fear people or evildoers against us, but there will be those that come against us in life. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. When we see the, this, the lost world and the sinners and everybody out there gaining all this wealth and, 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 and just whatever they're gaining, prosperity in terms of materialistic things and worldlyism and um, relativism, uh, this, this new age postmodernism where people are just all about me, me, me. Let's get everything I can get because I have one life, YOLO. You know, you live once only and then uh, that's it. Uh, I'm here to tell you folks that the word of God tells us to, to not look on the things that are seen, but that are on the things that are unseen and to have the eternal sense of view uh, to look with the eyes of God and not with our own eyes, because our own eyes are still in the flesh. We are still in the flesh. We're still in this body until Christ makes us perfect after he takes our spirit up to heaven and the, the kingdom up there. And thanks be to God when that will be. Verse 2 says, For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Verse 3, Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. My life verse is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord your God with all thine heart. Lean not on thy own understanding. In all ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And here again, we see so much in the, in the Psalms that David is telling us, Trust in the Lord at the end of the day. And you'll see in other areas where maybe he was, maybe he was falling to the wayside in his devotion to the Lord. And he was, he was actually not even taking his own advice. But how oftentimes do we say something and we do the other? We're all hypocrites in this world. I, I love when somebody tells, and I'm being sarcastic here, but I love when somebody tells me, I, I don't want to go to church because there's a bunch of hypocrites there. Well, you shouldn't go to the mall. You shouldn't go to the car dealership. You shouldn't go to the park. You shouldn't go to anywhere because we're all hypocrites at the end of the day. So, trust in the Lord and do good. We are called to do good, not do evil like the other verses. So shalt thou dwell in the land. And here, out of the Ten Commandments, what's the one commandment that gives us something back? It's number five. It's honor thy mother and thy father. So, when, God gives, when you do that, God will give you the land that you would dwell in. He says that. That's the one commandment that if you do, God's going to bless you for it. Obviously, he's going to bless you for all those commandments if you do them and you uphold them, regardless of that. But here again, he says that if we trust in him, he's going to give us land. He's going to give us a blessing. Uh, if we do good to others, we're going to get something back. And here it even says that he's going to feed us. Barely thou shalt be fed. We will be fed. I think so oftentimes I, I used to live my life for, for every day, like, um, like carpe diem sees the day and I have to get everything I can do and do everything I can do and... But I wasn't even thinking about whether I had a roof over my head. I was just taking all that for granted. I had a roof over my head. I was eating, uh, what, whatever. But now I look at the small things of life, just like simple, like clothes, food, and shelter. And I think how blessed I am just with that. Like that, that just moves my heart to just praise my God even more. And sometimes when I'm praying, I just, I just pray for those three things. I just thank you, God, that I have a roof over my head, that I have food, and that I have clothing. At the end of the day, God says that how much more does he love us than even the sparrows, the animals? He's going to feed them, but he's going to feed us more. He will if we trust in him. Yeah. Verse 4 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. I pray this verse all the time. If there's something that is in my life that I desire actually let me back up because there are some times when my desire is not right my desire is not the will of god so before i pray for my desire i always pray lord god would you do your will in my life first and then would you match my desire up with your will so that the perfect manifold sanctification of god would be in my life 
that he would make me who he wants me to be. Sometimes we have this perfect view, this plan all laid out in our minds about what our life's going to be like. And then life happens and it feels like a train came by and we're derailed, we're derailed off of our plans. Yeah. And I love what Pastor Fisher said the other week. And he said, plan to do things in your life that you didn't plan to do. But always plan to do what God planned for you to do. Yeah. If we tell God what our plans are, that's one way to get him to laugh. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's all about him. Amen. It is. So again, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Amen. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And you hear oftentimes that, that phrase. That's where the phrase comes from. Oh, this will pass. This soon shall pass. It will pass. You always hear that in life. Where does it come from? It comes from this verse right here. It soon, the Lord will bring it to pass. Everything. He's going to bring this entire life to pass. Thank God one day we're going to have new bodies and we're going to be out of this world away from all the sin and evil and destruction that Satan has brought upon this place. And verse 6 says, And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Verse 7, Rest in the Lord. And that's one reason why I picked to just stay right here in Psalms 37. Because so often we can, when you're studying for a message, you can go all over the place. You, you, can, you, you can pick verses that match together from the Old and the New Testament. And you can just jump all over the place. But I just wanted to rest in the Lord. I have just been reading Psalms 37 for weeks now. Just over and over and over. Ever since I discovered this, this chapter set of verses, this, this, this gold mine, really. This whole entire chapter is 37. It's just a gold mine. And I know I've read it many times, but when I just stopped and read it, I just rested in the Lord. And then the Lord gave me rest for my soul. And then it says, wait patiently for him and fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass and cease from anger and forsake wrath and fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. And here God's telling us, stop sinning. If we have an angry thought, that's again, we're going back into the flesh. We're, back, we're going back into the old man. We have got to remove this anger. We have got to forsake wrath. I love, we were at this conference this week at church uh, called Spiritual Warfare. And we were being taught how to stop sinning. If we're Christians, we're still going to sin every once in a while. But again, because we're in the flesh. I, I pray to God that we don't because God doesn't want us to be. He calls us to be perfect because, it's, because the Father is perfect. And if Jesus Christ came to this earth and lived a perfect sinless life, that means we can do it too. It does. It does. It absolutely means we can do it too. But we have to be walking with God 24-7. And we have to cease from anger. We have to stop sinning. We have to forsake wrath. If somebody has wronged us, we're supposed to bless them, not curse them, not get angry at them. Remove that. In the New Testament, the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, kindness, long-suffering, you know, forbearing one another, all of that. We are supposed to help those even who persecute us. And you just go look in the, in the Acts and in, in all the epistles that Paul wrote. I mean, if he would have got angry every time he would have got thrown in jail, we wouldn't have no epistles. We wouldn't have no New Testament. We would not have any example of how to be as a New Testament church or how to live beyond what Christ has showed us basically on the Sermon of the Mount. But sometimes we have to be continually reminded. And so really all of what Paul wrote was just a regurgitation of what Jesus taught. And so thanks be to God that we have those examples still. In verse 9, For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. And I was really blessed with this because sometimes you can pray and you can pray and you can pray for those people that are persecuting you and those, those people that don't even like you. And I think like, I try to be the nicest person I can be in this world, even to those that hate me. And they're still going to come after us. But God says that they're going to be cut off. And I don't really pray for my enemies to be cut off. I always pray for their salvation, that the Lord would bless them in a special, mighty way beyond what my flesh wants. Because my flesh really does want them to be destroyed. To be destroyed. But I want what God wants. And God doesn't want any to perish. He calls that all should come to the knowledge of Christ and that all should repent and receive salvation. And so verse uh, 10 says that for yet a little while and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. And so, the meek shall inherit the earth. 
And Jesus said that I am meek. Take my yoke for I am meek. And my burden is light. Right? And so Moses, before Jesus, Moses was the most meek man in the entire word of God. That's what the Bible says. In all the earth, Moses was the, was the meekest man to ever live. And meekness means to live your humility out. Live your humility out. It means to act humble at all times. It means to turn the other cheek. It means to do everything that Jesus said. Live the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount. And thou shalt inherit the earth. And he shall give you peace. Peace. But we have to respond rightly in the spirit with God. Verse 12. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. And Satan is always out there seeking who he may devour at all times. And we know that our bodies are going to wither away at the end of the day. So he's not really trying to get our bodies, but he's trying to get our mind. Like everything that we deal with in life is in the mind. It really is. It really is. I know we're all in here dealing with physical ailments. I've dealt with physical ailments at my, at, in, in my life as well. Not to the extent of, of, of the things in this room. But I don't, I don't want to live in this body any longer than God has called me to live in it. But I want to glorify God in my mind. Sometimes we get in our, we get in our mind, we get in ourself, and we think down because we can't do too much. But you can always pray regardless. You can always shake somebody's hand or smile at somebody or be a blessing to somebody. Just, just saying, saying hello to somebody, that can be a blessing. That is your worship to God. If you can't do anything else, you can always pray to God. You can know that God is with you at all times. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. And he's talking about the wicked against us. And the wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. For their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. And I think of this verse right here. When I've seen people try to persecute me in my life and I've prayed for God to deliver me out of the situation and for God to deliver them out of whatever hatred they have against me. Not because I've, any, I've done anything wrong, but because they hate the God we serve because they know he lives because the atheist is not out there trying to disprove Buddhism and Judaism and Hinduism and all these other fake religions, Muhammad, because all their gods are in the dead, are in the ground. They're all dead. None of them raised from the dead. And that's why Christians around the world are being murdered at a, at a, at a, at a giant rate right now. It's because they know it is the truth. And that's because Christ still lives. He's the greatest leader to ever live 2,000 years ago, and he's still... This Bible goes back 6,000 years and it's still influencing millions of lives and people are still being saved on a daily basis. And that's what we have to do. We have to preach the gospel. We cannot worry about whether Trump, Hillary, such and such, all these people. None of these people are going to save anybody. They're all empty promises. No man can ever deliver you from anything. And that's why we're here preaching the deliverer, the great deliverer, who is God and Jesus Christ in this word right here that David so faithfully wrote about so long ago. And so the wicked shall have their bows bent and their swords turned to us, but it will return to their own heart. Remember Goliath, David and Goliath. Goliath, in, in all reality, okay, so David and God together destroyed Goliath. But Goliath pretty much got what was coming to him. I mean, he was a big bad bully. He sent, sent of Satan. And he ended up dying. Because, he, because God turned it against him. That was just the will of God. And so that's what we can see in our life. And thanks be to God that sin has no reign over us. Amen. No reign over us. It will not condemn us. It will not condemn us. Because God has called us more than conquerors. And there is no condemnation found in those who are in Christ Jesus. And a little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. And that's where I come from, like, with my thinking, like, you know, I might not have too much, but praise be to God that God calls me better than the riches of many wicked. He calls the righteous man and the righteous woman better than the person with all the riches. Because no riches, you can't take, you don't ever see a coffin uh, with a with, with a U-Haul behind it going to the grave. You can't take that stuff to heaven with you. That, that's all temporal stuff. That's all going to just disappear once God burns this place up and he creates the new heaven and the new earth. And all this stuff we were trying to get all here while we're on earth. We're just going to lose crowns and lose blessings when we get to heaven. 
So we need to have that eternal view, that long view. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteousness. And thank God that he's upholding us. I can just imagine myself like literally in the hand of God, like God just holding me and just helping me in everything that I do, upholding me. Everywhere I go, I'm just trying to get the will of God, the mind of God, just seeing how God's going to use this situation. Even with the whole thing this morning happening with the Marine, you know, I was able to counsel him and talk to him this morning and maybe just give him a little bit of sense of hope. I know we're going to have to punish him and things like that. And granted, that's the same way with God. God has to punish sin. He has to discipline his children. He has to and he will. And even at the great, um, even at the, the judgment seat of Christ, which is where all Christians will go, all of the bad works that we've done, they'll be burned up. And we'll lose rewards for that. But thanks be to God, we're still going to be in heaven. We're just not going to get, we're just going to miss out on blessings. We're, gonna, we're just not going to have as many crowns to throw back to Jesus' feet when we get there. So, again, the Lord upholdeth the righteous. And the Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. So no matter how many days we're going to be living on this earth, he's going, to, he's going to let us live for a while. It says that he knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. So we are going to live for, forever in eternity with God. And that's eternal salvation. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. And I think when I do the right thing, you know, if you do the wrong thing, you always have to go back and you have to ask for forgiveness. You have to say you're sorry. You have to apologize. You feel regret. You feel guilt, shame, all of these things. That's what the world's trying to take out right now with secularism and postmodernism and all these new theologies that are coming out against uh, the theology of God and, and the kingship of Jesus Christ. They're trying to remove the shame and the guilt. No, it's okay to just be gay. It's okay to just be transgender or whatever. All this, all this weird stuff that's coming out, all this man's philosophy you know, it's okay to just go out in public naked and things like that. Like, all these things have been coming up for the last, uh, you know, few, few several dozen years, uh, ever since really the 1960s or so. And I'm sure many of us in here have seen these things, but it just keeps increasingly getting worse and worse and worse. And they're trying to remove shame because when they remove their shame, they sear their conscience and then they have no guilt. So then they think every way is right in man's own eyes. And that's where that comes from. Because then they're not responsible to God for what they've done because, they don't, they, because they've seared their conscience and everything they've done is, is right. It's okay with them. Well, somebody told me I could, I could just curse out everybody and anybody. Okay, you go do that and you see how that – you see if you get a job. You see if you, uh, see if you have a good relationship with somebody. You see if people treat you well. It's not going to happen that way. You can't just go along life, living life willy-nilly, just doing whatever you want. God has set up rules and laws and a moral code perfect for us to keep. So that we would be, so that we would be sheltered. It's not to, it's not to punish us. His rules are perfect and are good and are just for us. They are not to be a hindrance, and they are not. And I can remember my mind was more seared and more troubled when I did not walk with God than now when I do walk with God and I do all His laws and, and I obey Him. I am at so much more peace than when I was living without God. And but the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the land shall be as the fat of lambs, and they shall consume into smoke, and shall they consume away. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. And here, again, we see the wicked, they're going to perish, they're going to be removed. That's Satan, all his demon angel armies, and everybody else along with him that does not receive Jesus Christ will perish, and they will be removed. And the righteous are called to show mercy. And to give. Just as God has been merciful upon us. Undeserving uh, of his mercy and his grace of his merit. And then he gave us the free gift of salvation through the mercy of his free death on the cross. He gave us salvation and eternal life to live with him in heaven because he loves us. So we're called to do the same thing for everybody else. And for such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth. And they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. So anybody we see, anybody we meet, we're called to bless them. And they will be blessed by us. Regardless of whether, whether or not they ever receive Jesus or not. But God has blessed us so we could bless others at the end of the day. And the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighted in his way. And I have been to 29 countries in 27 states in 10 years I've been in the Marine Corps. And everywhere I go, I never saw it until recently, until a few years ago. But God was taking me everywhere he put me 
Even when I wasn't living with God, walking with God, he took me everywhere he needed me to go to get me to exactly where he wanted to be now. And God will do the same thing for you. And I know he has. He surely has. It is not over yet. And he'll continue to order your steps until he calls you home. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And we see that we will fall. Here, it tells us we will fall. We will make mistakes all the time. But God doesn't, God's not a, God's not a mean God. He's a loving God. He's a merciful God. And when we fall, he's right there to pick us up. And here it says he holds us with his hand. So when we fall, we don't need to think. We need to know we're already forgiven. We don't need to think, oh, well, God, you know, he's just going to abandon me. And so many times I see, I, 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 met a, I met a Marine recently that was about to commit suicide. And he says, I just feel like God has just left me. No, God is right there waiting for you to turn around to come back to him. He's never left you. He's never forsaken you. And God will never do that. I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good and dwell evermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. And the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. And the mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue, and his tongue talketh of judgment. For the law of his God is in his heart, and none of his steps shall slide. And Pastor Fisher, he preached a great sermon series of sets, a set of sermon series talking about how we will never slip or slide. God will never let us slip or slide or fall. He will, like, we will fall on our own, but he won't let us completely go smack down on our face. Just like a father, when a kid falls, if, if you're teaching a kid how to walk, if the kid trips, you're going you're gonna to pick him up before he falls. And God is that same way because he loves us. And the wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. And I've experienced that so much. I, I really, the more I, I walk with God, the more attacks come against me. And that's the truth right there. The more you walk with God, the closer you are with God, the more Satan's going to try to get you. And something happened. Two things happened. When, when you accepted the cross, you received another cross. What, what do I mean by that? When you came to the cross of Calvary and you bent the knee and you said, Lord Jesus, I trust you. I accept you. You are my savior. Please come into my life and save me. I want to walk with you all the days of my life. Guess there's another cross, a cross hair, a target cross, like as in a scope, came right on your forehead from Satan. Because he knew and he knows that he can't get you anymore. So he's going to try to take everything away from you at the end of the day, just like Job. Just like Job. So when we bend a knee to the cross of Calvary, the cross of Satan, the hair, the, the cross hairs from a, from a rifle or a gun, what have you, will come against us in tremendous uh, attacks in armies. And that's when we need to be praying and we need to be fasting that the Lord would remove Satan. Because Jesus was in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. And he was attacked more than ever when he was there. And I guarantee, when I, for me, I know this is for me personally, whenever I've fasted, I've been more attacked in my life ever than any other time. And sometimes when I'm walking with God and I'm so busy in my life and so many things are going on, then little things will, will slip up here or there. And just little minor things will come to attack me in, in, in my mind, in my flesh. If I go back into my old ways and my old thinking and my thoughts and I remove my thinking from being with God, being parallel with God's thinking... Then I can make a small thing into a big issue. And that's when I mess up. And then I got to go ask people for forgiveness. And then, then I regret things. And I'm, and I'm just, I don't feel like I have a sweet sense of a spirit to me. And it just, things just get messed up. So we just need to be walking with God. And, but we need to be reminded that when we uh, came to the cross, another set of crosshairs came on us. So just beware of that. And the Lord will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Again, we're called to wait on the Lord. We've been called to trust in the Lord. We've been called to delight in the Lord. We've been called to commit our ways in the Lord. We've been called to rest in the Lord. We've been called to cease sinning from the Lord. And here we're also called to wait in the Lord. And that's what God is calling us to do, is to wait, in, wait on the Lord. And it will give us patience. And it will, again, we have to wait to get to heaven. Because we're here on this earth, God has set our age limit, our time, 
And all we have to do is wait on the Lord and he'll give us the precious promises that are exceedingly grateful to us, which is eternal life and goodness here on this earth. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he, would, he could not be found. And mark the perfect man and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace. The end of all of us in this room, if we are children of God, men and women of God, saved individuals by the blood of Jesus Christ, our end is perfect peace. Our end is perfect peace. It's perfect peace. There is no peace in this world without Jesus. Yes. And you cannot know peace until you know Jesus. Amen. You will not. You will not know peace until you know Jesus. The only peace in this world is found in Jesus. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together, and the end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. And he is, of their, and he is their strength in the time of trouble. The salvation of the righteous is the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. What are you going through today? What, what's troubling your mind? What are you going through? I don't know. It might be physical ailment. It might be a mental issue. It might be a family member. It might be somebody lost on your prayer list that you're praying for. It might be a friend. I don't know. God's going to have to speak to you and tell you what is in your mind that's troubling you. But his precious word says that he is their strength. And you will be strengthened mentally, physically, and spiritually, and emotionally for whatever you're going through if you just trust in the Lord. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. And he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. And that is the great deliverer. The Lord will deliver you out of everything. Whether he delivers you out of everything in this life, it doesn't really matter. This life is but a vapor. It vanishes like that. One day is like a thousand days to God. What are we doing with our life? Are we trusting God? Are we trusting him? Are we committing our ways to him? Are we praying with him? Are we talking with him? Are we reading our Bibles? Are we doing everything we should? Have we closed all, all the old doors in our past? Have we made things right with people? Who do we need to ask for forgiveness from? Who do we need to forgive? God can deliver us from everything. Let's pray.